welcome to the VoiceOver Insider podcast and our video of the podcast. So glad to have you here. Um, my name is Julie Williams, and our guest today is Jody Bentley, who you may or may not have heard of because she's well known everywhere, not just in VoiceOver. So, uh, you know, she might be better known if you're an actor than if you're a VoiceOver talent, but you should know her as a VoiceOver talent. Uh, I mean, you should get to know her as a voiceover talent because of her expertise and her audiobook recording and especially her expertise in marketing and branding, which is what we're going to talk about today because she serves all different uh, parts of the entertainment and acting industry, which includes voiceover. So let me tell you a little bit about Jody. And you know what? Her, her uh, bio... Her experience is so extensive that I'm going to read some of it, okay? And normally I like it when you just tell about the person, but um, in this particular instance, I ask for your mercy and I'll read some, okay? So she's based in Los Angeles. She's an actor, producer, audiobook narrator, and creative business coach. And uh, she's worked at, uh, not uh, she's worked for Netflix and Hulu, ABC, CBS, Apple TV, and some of the other places you may never have heard of before, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so heard of them. All right. She's also been educating actors and artists for years now on how to achieve their goals, which is one of the things that we'll be talking about today, uh, which, of course, is building relationships with those key people, um, how to implement success strategies, how to stop the self sabotage of your own brand. Have we all done that or what? And she has taught workshops on all of that stuff to SAG Africa, to uh, SAG Aftra, SAG, uh, I mean, Equity. Actors' Equity, Comic Con, and more than 50 university training programs. So we're learning from the best here. She's also worked in Modern Family, Never Have I Ever, among others. She's got four films coming out this year alone, which I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> Coffee break time as we go, huh? Okay. Um, <clears throat> she's got some signature programs I want to tell you about real quick before we get into talking about uh, starting with, you know, voiceover brand, uh, branding. Um, she's got the Actors Think Tank which uh, is a membership community that, that you could join. And I, I'll tell you about that because we do acting too as voiceover talents, right? Um, Dare to be unstoppable. Her students have gone on to perform in Broadway, star in films, recur in TV, book, and, um, and voiceover uh, commercials, advertisements, land agents and managers, live abundant and joyful and creative lives. That's what happens when we're not frustrated in acting. And when you get educated, and you have a support group, then you aren't quite as frustrated. <laughs> you know, there's something about how we, we do all this stuff alone. And then she recently launched a software called the Actors Office, which we're going to talk about because this is, it's an all-in-one management uh, of your career. Like everything from who did you audition for when, so you don't forget to follow up. Sometimes we get so many of those auditions that, uh, you know, we, we don't follow up. And, and seriously... We're not right for this one, perhaps, but the next one could have our name written all over it, right? Okay, so so there are so many people talking about welcome, first of all, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hi, hi, <laughs> welcome. Yes, thank you, thank you for having me here, Julie. <laughs> I, I want to thank you for for giving us your time. Now, I've heard so much talk about branding. Yeah, and and frankly, I feel like most of it is fluff. There's like, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to brand my voice, I'm going to have a weird picture of such and such. And I'm like, I look at some of this branding and I think I'm going to hire somebody. And I look at the branding and I think this doesn't tell me anything about what they sound mm -hmm. like. I don't know what to what to think. I mean, we know that uh, we know that Lucky Charms is going to have like the marshmallow and the charms in it. You know, right. We don't know what we get when we open up their cereal box. So tell us your, you know framework what what branding is yeah um <clears throat> i think there's so much uh misinformation about branding let's just start with that right i think ev everyone and their mother's talking about branding right. it's not just a slogan no no it's not just a slogan look branding for me first of all is holistic right um that i think so many people and, and actors and artists or voiceover artists we feel like oh i gotta put this thing on me Right. I got to put this thing on me so people get me. And for me, it's the complete opposite. Right. It's working from the inside out, because, of course, for a voiceover artist. Yeah, it's the the timbre of your voice, the intonation, the sound, oh, the, the, the pacing of your, your speech um, accents you may have, whatever. It's all of that. But that's just a surface piece of it. Right. So uh, when I talk about branding, I want people to go deeper of really 
what is the career that you want? What are the stories that you want to tell? What is the legacy that you want to leave? And really working from the inside out because say, you know, a, a, a client could have a really high pitched character voice, but they love doing drama. <laughs> they love doing, telling deeper mystery thriller stories, right? But their voice might be animation. Well, how do we make that work? How can we make um, all those pieces play nicely together? Where sometimes I, I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I have to be this thing because that's what people tell me, or that's what I should do. Or, um, you know, whatever people say, oh, well, you, you have a really great voice. You should be doing commercial voiceover, or you should be doing audiobooks. And then we start to just jump down that path of should without really starting internally of, but what is the kind of career that I, I want and who who am I? So is it best to to like come up with, um, like you said, the, the branding of all these areas come together? Is it best to come up with one kind of branding for audiobooks and another kind of branding for um, animation and another kind of branding for your on-camera spokesperson, uh, you know, and, and um, sure. <clears throat> like that? Or, or is one branding that says Jody Bentley is one yeah. branding the best? You know, the more I've been coaching actors, voiceover artists, artists for 13 years now. And the more I've coached and just seeing the trends in our industry and how they shift, I feel like it is about one brand and it is about this is who I am because a brand isn't one thing. And I think that's where people get caught up, right? There's type and there's brand. And type is one thing. Type is I do I'm bubbly and I do animation or I'm, you know, do t, you know, young audience books. That's that's one thing. But we're three dimensional human beings and we can do multiple things. So for me, I want to approach it holistically. And I think I think people appreciate that because then it adds the humanity level to it. Right. And it gets the gimmicky stuff away. And if you're approaching it from that place, because what I really look for is like the three overall essences, right? So, um, you know, you could have a very um, authoritative, uh, deep sound to your voice, but maybe there's an, 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 a, a, a sarcastic intelligence and maybe there's a, a fun wit. Like maybe, maybe that could be all things and all those things are true. So how do we look at the totality of that? And then how do we package it? Then how can we look at color schemes on a website, um, creating a tagline around that as a whole? How can we look at the the images we're going to use, the visceral feel of all of your materials? How can they represent all those things? Because people are going to see what they want to see, right? which is the biggest thing. Like people are branding you, even if you're not branding yourself, because people are going to see what they want to see. And we, we all approach things from our own rose colored glasses. So if we can find a way, or if you can find a way in the branding to incorporate those three essences of you, some people are going to latch on to different pieces and that's okay. Right. But we want to tell them the whole story, not just this one little tip of the iceberg. Okay. So I want to ask you about three different voiceover brands, Okay, um, two of which I think are brilliant the best yeah. I've ever seen, and yeah. that which is mine that I'd like your input on. Okay, <laughs> okay great. Let me take a sip here. <laughs> we all get ready. Okay. One of the best brandings I've ever seen is by a, a voiceover talent named Doug Turkel. Okay. He was out of Miami, does lots of national stuff. Uh, he is a union guy, and he just, he's been around voiceovers. I, like, I met him in the 90s. Oh, wow, great. Um, and I was doing a, a workshop with Dick Orkin in in in, um, in Dallas, and he came. So, all right. So his is um, the unnouncer, the un dash announcer, and that he's been using since the '90s, which is when it became popular mm -hmm. to have that um, yes. announcer sound. Right. In the '80s, we were sound. Found the announcer. Yes. So, what do you feel about that? And and um, I don't believe he does on camera or acting, but I don't know for got sure it. he doesn't. Got it, got it, got it. Um, I mean, obviously that's very geared towards voiceover, right? Like if, if I were branding him for on camera, I'd probably get a little bit deeper into like thematically the stories that he tells. Um, one thing I do with my on camera actors or my theater actors, um, we really look at themes. I'm really big on branding themes because we're all drawn to stories. Like there's probably a movie, Julie, that every time you feel sick or sad, you want to watch it, right? There's something about some movies that we just watch or we look at characters and we go, oh my God, I love that. I I wish I could have played that. And we really look at those roles because there's something about that um, that we're drawn to, 
right? And it's really about the theme of the, of that character and the themes of those stories. So if I were working with them on camera, I would say, let's find a little bit more thematically. What are you telling, right? What are those stories you tell? So I can go, oh, I get it. I understand where he fits. But I think that on announcer in the voiceover world is simple and brilliant. I think that's awesome. If you were your client, would you, and he did on camera, would you yeah. recommend that he sticks with announcer for voiceover, which I think is incredible, and then has something else maybe that's unbelievable or we well, don't want to say <laughs> not believable, but you know, right, right, right. Either, either another unword or uh, something totally different for acting. It might be, you know, I think once we would do the work and really figure out the themes and his essences, um, it might even be taking the unannouncer and then adding something to it. Do you know what I mean? Um, Because I do have clients where the brand is the same on, on no matter what they're doing, commercials, voiceover, the TV film, whatever it may be. And I have some clients who their branding is a little different for voiceover than it is for on camera because the on camera is about the face, the bone structure, right? There's a little bit more um, about the presence and the visual, obviously, that we see where the voice is solely the voice. So I have some clients where we do brand it differently, but there is still some through line in the different characters that they might play, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I do think on announcer, because what I think about, um, I call it a branding statement or we can call it like the log line of you. What I think works best with those is when it's clever, not cutesy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not too poetic. Um, and when it makes people go, oh, I want to know more. I want to know more. Oh, that's compelling, right? When it's interesting. And the unannouncer to me is like, ooh, I want to hear that. I want to know more about that. So I do think that that's really brilliant. So clever, not cutesy. This one might be cutesy, but I think it's clever and it's incredible. Okay, <laughs> okay go ahead. <laughs> do you know Lisa Biggs? She's I do not know Lisa. Uh, you, do, you do or you don't? I do not. Okay. She has done lunch boxes and toys and oh, okay. cartoons. And she yeah. is in probably by now 40 or early forties, maybe. Okay. Um, and, uh, and she has this tiny little voice that she's always had. I mean, okay. when I talk to her. She has this, I wrote and voiced a, a book, a children's book, and she did the characters of all the different children. And she was incredible in it. Amazing. I just love that. Anyway, Lisa Biggs, B I G G S. Uh huh. Okay. Little voice, big talent. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. Talent. I mean, look, that is clever because it incorporates her last name. So then you have brand recognition of your name, right? Because your name is also your logo, right? You want to brand that in people so they get it. So I think that that's really clever that she's using her name in her branding statement. Um, and then and the juxtaposition of that, it makes me want to know. I want to know what she sounds like now. Like, I think that that's and great. A little cutesy, I think, but the audience she's going for is a lot is younger. cutesy. Yeah. And that's oh, yeah. right. And that's the thing. Like if she was going after, if she was doing, you know, indie film, I'd be like, okay, that's everyone considers himself a big talent, you know, as an actor, do you know what I mean? Like it might be too much. Right. But for her audience, and that's the thing we got to remember with branding is who is your audience? Who are you talking to? Who are you selling to? So I think that's really smart because she is taking her audience into consideration. And what I love about it is it's short, right? And it sounds like she's short, her voice is small. It's all about little, little things. So I think that that makes a lot of sense, you know, it doesn't sound cocky. You know, like your branding should no. be I'm the best, you know, I mean, no, it doesn't okay. sound cocky like that at all. It just sounds like, wow, it's really the contrast is is great. I, yeah. I just I really like that one. And yeah. then the third one is the one that I liked enough to choose. OK, I, I don't do any on camera. I haven't done on camera since uh, I've been voicing infomercials for 40 years and lots of other things for 40 years. And one of my infomercial clients, I did a little bit of on camera for him. Uh, as one of the background people measuring my waist okay. before and after, you know, that uh -huh. type of thing. And, um, but I, for the most part, I haven't done on camera since probably the nineties, maybe okay. I did one or two in the early two thousands. I, I don't remember except for that, that one, but, um, and I've done a little theater, but you know, I was a single mom and that went by the wayside pretty soon because it just takes too much time. Sure. But, sure. um, so mostly what I do is voiceover and any kind of voiceover that's storytelling or okay. or commercials, but not acting Got because it. I'm not a great actress. I'm a great storyteller. That's my okay. strength. Okay. Great. But everybody calls themselves a storyteller. So mm. what we did when we were trying to determine my branding is what do you hear most from your clients? And yes. what I heard most was how easy I made their job. 
Okay. They get okay. it to me. And most of them, I, most of my sessions are not even directed that, you know, sometimes the first time they, they have it directed. One time I did a thing for HGTV. They sent me the script. We were going to record on Monday. I recorded it Thursday and sent it to them and said, um, just wanted to see if we're on the same page and record this. And if you like it, you can just use that. And they're like, oh, we loved it. And they kept it. Right. I don't like being directed because uh, in the middle of direction, it's like they stop you and say, put emphasis on this word. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I do need to emphasize that concept or that word, but I need to feel what I'm saying. I don't need to stop to be told to punch that word because we don't want to punch mm -hmm. anyway. Right. Sure, sure, sure. So I feel like that branding can cover just about anything. But when I send you a voiceover demo and it says easier said and done, easier said and done. Easier said and done. Okay. Right. Okay. When I send you that branding, it does tell I make their job easier said and done. And I do have that in my, in my intro letters, you know, uh, to make yeah. your work easier said and done, whatever. Um, but it doesn't tell you what I sound like. And I don't right. have the voice and I don't have the French accent and, and right. I do characters and I don't have the raspy, sexy sound. I'm just... Mm -hmm. The person. I'm just your everyday woman. Right. So what do I do for branding? Or is this sufficient? Or what would you say about that? Does the brand have yeah. to represent your voice like theirs too? His, uh, Doug's represents his style. Lisa's yes. represents her sound of voice. Yeah. Mine represents uh, my service and how they benefit from right. me. But the what about working with you? That's yeah, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Because also... You know, I'd have to listen to some of your material. I mean, obviously, I hear what you sound like right now. Um, but even with easier said, it 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 has just a um, an, an, e, an, like an ease to it, like an ease to your voice, even or just like a, a naturalness, right? Um, uh, I, I love I love the play on stuff in puns and things like that. So I do think that that, that works really well because then people can latch onto it because they get it. And that's the thing, right? That's why I talk about it can't be too poetic or I, I prefer it not to be too poetic because then people can't latch onto it and they're still trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure out what you're trying to say, which a confused mind will always say no, right? So the yeah. clearer we can be, the better. So... What I what I do love about it is it does it does um, have a, a connotation for me of like easier said. It's like there's just an ease to what I'm going to do. It's going to be very clear for you. You can trust it. Right. There's a simplicity to it. Right. Um, no bells and whistles to it. Right. So it, it does make me feel almost like um, that every woman quality. Right. Without saying every woman voice. Do you know what I mean? Which that would be a little over the head. If you got my demo and it said easier said and done um, logo on it, Julie Williams, easier said and done. Uh, what type of sound would you expect to hear? Would you expect to hear basically what I am? Or I would expect to hear, like I said, is it something with like a voice that was easy to listen to? Well, a voice, a, yeah, a voice that was easy to listen to, clarity, probably authority, right? Like the end done, like we're going to do it. Um, so I think for me, what I would want that would even um, make that, again, take it a step further is what fonts are you using? What colors are you using? Mm -hmm. Right. So then, cause you know, um, uh, the packaging of it is the most important piece, right? Like the website is how we package it. So when people go to the website, we go, Oh, I get it. I get it. And a lot of that has to do with the logos and the color scheme and the design and how we feel. So if we're talking about, um, an ease, a simplicity, a trust, but a, um, a, an authority. Um, I would want colors that would represent that, right? So things that feel, um, that make me feel safe, that make me feel warm. Um, and, and, you know, that could be like, a, 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 it could be deeper colors. Like, um, um, let me think, that could be like a, like a hunter green or that could be a baby blue or peaches, um, you know, something that makes me baby feel blue and light pink. Uh, kind of okay. an aqua blue and light pink. I wish I had thought ahead uh, <laughs> that I was going to ask you this because I did. Right. It, you know, you look, right. And I would have had it. I think the, the, the blue to me is, is spot on, right? Because blue, if we look at the, like colors have a universal language, right? You can even Google what colors mean and you can find a, a, a ton of websites that explain it. Uh, but for blue really is, it's trustworthy. It's calming. It's accessible, right? Pink for me has a little bit of a, um, it depends on the shade of pink. 
pink, but like a baby pink can also mean a little childish though. Um, or, you know, girlish, really? um, and I don't get girlish from you. So I might find a different complementary color that is more of that. Um, I'm like, I'm going to get the job done. The more of the, like the really, you can trust me authority thing. Right. Do you know what I mean? Just right. to have that juxtaposition there. Um, but I, I think that's really smart, Julie, because again, if you're doing a lot of things and you're like, ah, this is, that, that is how you do the work. That is also the benefit of working with you. And I do get a sense because if you are giving me a log line and you're a voiceover person, I am going to assume it's about your voice as well. So again, and I think those are the qualities that I do get from that line. Okay. So, um, what about if a person is like, I don't know what my brand is. I'm like, Julie, I'm just every woman. Um, I don't have clients, so I can't see what it is they like about working with me. I haven't done that yet. You know, I'm brand new. Um, what, what, how can somebody figure out what their branding is? Like what's the yeah. process you would go through? So, I mean, I, I do have a whole um, a branding process, obviously, but I think one exercise that would be most important in this case, I'll share with you, I think it's just getting feedback on the sound of your voice. So even putting up, even doing a, a, a video on, a, on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever, even just doing an MP3, sending it to, your, to people that you know, colleagues, friends, other, other art, artists, actors, and just saying, give me five adjectives that describe my voice. And then you collect the data because it's really about data. Like that's really all my part, huge part of my branding process is, okay, who are you? Who do you want to be? Right. The personal assessment of who you are and the career you want. But then we have to get that external data. Right. Because if we do, if, if, if we only approach our careers coming from who we want, well, I want them to see this about me. Right. We will get bitter and jaded and burnt out if nobody sees that. Right. And then if we only listen to the external and go, well, everyone says I should do this authority stuff or I should do this or I should do that. And we only do that. We are also going to get bitter and jaded and burnt out. Yeah. I, I discovered right. that what you're, what you're best at usually ends up being what you like best at the same time. I, and then I trust that to be so. And I've had clients over the years where that wasn't the case. So then how do we repackage, right? Or rebrand in a way that still feels authentic, but we like leaning into um, what people see more. Mm -hmm. So even for example, I'm after, I'll, this is an on camera e example, uh, but when I was living in New York, um, I was doing, I do a lot of theater and musical theater, and then I was uh, transitioning into film and television. Now at that time in New York, my hair is naturally curly, like very curly, <laughs> like really curly. <laughs> and I was a redhead at the time. So I had a big mop of redheaded curls, yet my face is very power authority. Um, uh, you know, I, I play a lot of wealthy women just because of my bone structure, right? Even though I come from lower middle class, but because I started wanting to transition to film and TV, but my energy energy was lawyer, CEO, professional, my hair was not. And so there was a disconnect, uh -huh. yeah. right? So when I straightened my hair, I remember a commercial agent, even at the time I straightened my hair, even when it was still red and I went in the office to see her and she was like, there you are there you are. And I was like, okay. It's because it became too much about the curls and the curls have a whole connotation, right? Like a raspy voice even has a, like you even said a, a sexy rasp, right? We, we have a connotation with that already. So we come with preconceived notions about a lot of stuff. So we get to know what that is, but then we can also make packaging decisions to be in alignment with what we want. So what do you feel about somebody who wants to, um, uh, use a branding that says they do everything like versatile voice or, you know, oh, something like that. How is uh, that? that take? Yeah. I, I mean, versatile is not a brand. I, I, I despise the word versatile. <laughs> we're all versatile. I mean, let's be real. We're all versatile. Right. Or like people say I'm quirky. I'm like, Oh my God, everyone in, the, in their mother is quirky, but what kind of quirk are you? You know, are you zany? Are you offbeat? Are you wry? Like there's so many different ways to describe that. Um, but for me, versatile is not a brand that's being a little bit of a people pleaser. So how can you get more specific? And it's hard sometimes, like you said, if you don't have the information yet, you don't have the data yet, you don't, might not have the bookings yet, but that's why if you can at least reach out and say, how does my voice make you feel? Give me five adjectives. What would you imagine me narrating? Where would you, where do you hear voices like mine? Like even just doing some of that data research to have a jumping off point and then you'll get feedback from the industry and look, a brand isn't like, oh, this is my brand. It's done. You know, it's like we're growing, living, breathing creatures. I've rebranded a couple of times just because life experience came in that changed
changed my perception about certain things. And I wanted to bring that into my storytelling. Okay. And tell me about your five-day challenge. You've got a five-day challenge coming up. I do. I am so, so excited about it. Let me start here by telling you, um, if you're watching this on video, it's being released in February of 2023. If you're listening to it on audio, that's going to be released in mid-March of 2023. So uh, all of the information is still relevant, but it's more urgent if you're listening <laughs> to the audio in March. Okay, just a little FYI. So tell us about uh, not going with your five-day challenge. Yes, this challenge, it starts March 20th. So if you are listening to this before March 20th, you can read the description to get the link to, to RSVP. So um, I, I, I last did this five-day challenge uh, in 2021. And people were like, when are you doing it again? When are you doing it again? So I finally have the energy to do it again. So we're doing it now. <clears throat> and it's literally five days, five tools really to get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I approach everything holistically. So each day of the challenge is a different skill and a different tool. So we're going to talk more about branding right on day one. So if you're really enjoying this conversation and you want to go deeper, that's what we'll do on day one. Day two, we talk about marketing. Day three, we talk about finances. We get to talk about that as artists. Day four, we talk about mindset. And day five, we talk about relationships. Wow. And it's really um, all these tools and every day is a new exercise, a new assignment. I have daily prizes, but it's really to get you inspired, number one, but also thinking in, in a different way or maybe outside the box on all these things and giving you actions that you can take to move forward. It's and at the end of the, oh, okay, there you go. what's the end goal? <laughs> no, so at the end of the challenge, um, I do talk about my membership, the Actors Think Tank, and that's where we can really take the work and go deeper um, with that. Okay, cool. So we'll be back with Jody Bentley in just a minute. So I would say Julie's approach to coaching is direct and very kind. She's definitely no nonsense. But I would add that she's also never harsh or critical in a disheartening sort of way. She quickly assessed my skill level and asked what I wanted to accomplish by working with her. She starts by teaching her proven techniques and that builds a solid foundation. Then, she tailors her coaching to build on that foundation. Coaching with Julie gave me the tools I needed to move forward with confidence. And she can do the same for you. One of the things that Julie conveys right at the beginning, she's incredibly organized. I cannot tell you how many people I have worked with that they are very gifted, but they're not very organized. But organized appeals to me because I come from a medical background. Anyway, one of the things that she emphasized was her euphemism of the girl in the red coat, meaning you, your essence, your personality, your sound is unique. And that's what will sell in the marketplace as long as you stay true to that. And so that was certainly the case in working with Julie. And um, I'm hoping that if if we have a chance to do this again in six months, um, that I'll just have a whole sheaf of contracts <laughs> that I'll be able to show you and say, see, it really did work. But I do have faith and I do have confidence. So I'm hopeful. Julie's coaching has helped me in my regular acting as well as my voice acting. Her techniques helped me prepare for an audition and I got the part. I was able to quickly look at the script and figure out which words to emphasize and how to add music to my phrasing. And her training has really been a game changer for me. Hi there, I'm Glenn Moore and I've been working in voiceover for many, many years. Hey, I just wanted to take a minute to say that if you are looking for a voiceover coach to help you gain a better skill set, maybe you're just getting started in the industry or maybe you've been at this for a while, I highly recommend Julie Williams as a coach either way. She's a pro, she's been working in VO for many, many years as a talent and coach, and I studied with Julie a few years ago and really learned a lot from her. From the way she helps you approach the copy, to marking it up in just the right places and on just the right words for the right emphasis and effect, to just being a good listener and coaching you not only through the mechanics of VO, but also the marketing and understanding the business more to help you deal with the reality of what it takes to succeed. Julie's coached to established pros to beginners, and she can help you elevate your skills or train to become ready for that first demo. I wish you the best in your VO career, and if you're looking for a professional VO coach, Coach to help you succeed, contact Julie to get started today. 
Okay, we're talking to Jody Bentley on the Voiceover Insider podcast. I'm Julie Williams. Uh, Jody is an actress, an acting coach, a management coach. Uh, she does it all within the entertainment industry, audiobooks, uh, narrator. Um, so tell us, Jody, put on your management hat here for just a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the actor's office? Okay. So the actor's office, um, <laughs> it was, it's, it's a software, um, that I've literally always wanted, you know, I, for, for, okay. I I've been coaching artists, actors globally for 13 years. The biggest issue that I see with most people literally, literally globally is not building relationships or letting relationships fall through the cracks, right? Not maximizing relationships or feeling nervous about reaching out, right? I think that that's a, a big struggle people have. And even in my own career, I've just always wanted a, a, a better than an Excel spreadsheet, better than whatever, like a tool to help me remember who I met, when I met them, notes about them, reminders to follow up and, and a place to track my auditions and what I did and feedback I got. And I built it like we built it. So, um, you know, over 2020 finally had space and time. So I got a developer and, and here we are. So I, I did a beta launch to my clients and this year we're doing a full public launch. And I got to say, uh, I just, I just love it so much. It's what I've always wanted to stay organized. It's just an all in one management tool just to stay on top of the business side. And it's intuitive. It reminds you to do things. It runs reports so you can see everything at a glance. We've been talking about branding. You can run branding reports because every audition you attach to a branding essence that you have. And you can see, wow, I really get called in for this authoritative thing all the time. But this one, I don't a lot when I was, so maybe I'd lean into this more, right? Because if we, if we have data, then we know how to market package and pitch without data. That's challenging. So, so that's also what the tool does. And, uh, basically yeah. it's CRM with lots and then some a CRM, Correct. actors and voiceover talents, and then some. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. And I do have, which I think we were going to put in the description, I have a, a free mini course on actually building relationships and how to do that. Because I look at relationship building from three different avenues, from building them, creating them, and maintaining them. And I break those lessons down in the mini course and then talk about the actor's office in there as well. So if you are really finding that relationships are falling through the cracks or you get nervous on following up with people, or maybe you find um, random names on your phone <laughs> that you don't know who they are, I really invite you to have a better system. <laughs> So Let's you can check out that mini course. Okay. What what I, I what I usually teach people to do is um, in, in in when I teach marketing, I teach them take uh, go on LinkedIn or somewhere wherever you yeah. find them, and do a search and find key people, five of them who you want to work for, mm -hmm. and then I say start stalking them. Don't let them know you're stalking them, but like search them everywhere. Search them on Google and see if they've been written about in backstage or, you know, something. Yep. Um, if they've been featured uh, talking about their expertise on a, a, a TV show, a network or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just look for that. And, and you also see how many awards they've won. If any, you'll find out uh, by looking at their social, you know, did they just have a grandchild or a baby? Right. Or, you know, they just got a new puppy and and you're a dog person, too. Mm -hmm. So then you approach the people you're not like. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie Williams and I do voiceovers, you know, <laughs> and my my branding is, you know, that's really a stupid way to approach anyway. But <laughs> so you're, you're, you don't have a relationship, but you start building one by liking things that they do, yes. they post, sharing things they post, sending them a note that says congratulations on the article and such and such. I have a copy of it if you didn't get one, because sometimes I've been in magazines before that I didn't even know I was in. I went to church one day and said, there's an article about you in the newspaper. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sunday paper. Like, cool. Um, I'll have to go look at that. He's my <laughs> now. Um, I love that approach. And here's why. Um, it's right in alignment with, with what I teach, because I think we get caught up as artists that building relationships means I pitch. And I pitch myself. And that, for me, is, is just the opposite way to do things. I think it's about being human. And we hear this a lot. We'll just be human. You're like, well, what does that mean? How do I just be human? But it is what you said. It's finding the people that are in alignment with your goals, your storytelling, whatever it may be, whether that's a casting director, um, a publishing company, uh, whatever, right? whoever it may be, gaming uh, company, um, finding those people 
And really it's about building relationships with people, not companies, right? We, of course we want to look at companies too, but I, sometimes I find people, oh, I'm targeting this company. Well, I'm like, but who are you targeting? Relationships are people. That's what we have, that's the foundation of, of the actor's office because that person can move to another company and you want to keep that relationship with that person. But it is about humanity and how can we connect with people on a human level? Because people want to work with people they like, let's be real. And, and if you are always pitching and making it about you, it could be a real turnoff. I remember I was producing a film. It was one of the first films I was producing. And I couldn't believe the barrage of emails I was getting out of the woodwork from like random people, people I didn't know. And they were just like, oh, I see you're doing this film. I'm, you know, I write music. I see you're doing this film. I do this. I, and if you need someone and no one cared at all about me. Mm -hmm. And then like, I got one email in there that said, wow, I see this is the first film that you're producing. Congrats. What a big undertaking. I also do this. If I can be of service to you, let me know. And I was like, that person I responded to. Yeah. Because they were coming at it from a human level. Yeah. I, I think, think it's so mad at me because I didn't give them a critique of their audition. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have time to critique everybody's audition. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, man. So yeah, finding the merge, really. And that's what you're talking about, like the grandchild, the dog, the this. It's finding the merge with someone. Because if they do post something on Instagram, and it is of a dog, and you have a dog, and you could DM them and go, Oh, my God, I saw that photo. So cute. Uh, I'm such a dog lover. Um, I really, and I just want to say, I've just been following you for a while. And I just really appreciate your, your POV and, and your approach to this industry. I'm also, a, you know, a voiceover artist. I just want to say how much I appreciate you. Yeah. That will open a dialogue, you know, and I think we, we get to the pitch too fast and relationships take time. Right. And, and that's why I talk about like we want to build. Building is for people you don't know. Right. Who's on your targeted list and how are you building? Um, and then creating is, OK, we built it. We had a touchstone with them. But how are we creating it to deepen it? And then maintaining is making sure that we're checking in with them. We're following up after a certain period of time. Because, you know, I know when I first started off in my career, I'd spend all this time building relationships and then they'd all fizzle away because I wouldn't maintain it. Yeah. Because I didn't know what to say or I was afraid to follow up or whatever was in my 20 year old brain. You know? <laughs> and the way I see it, every, every prospect that you don't follow up with was a waste of your time. Oh, completely. You know, there's, there are people that sell uh, voiceover contact lists. Like I sell voiceover contact lists. Um, 50 names at a time. And I only sell them to 10 people. And then we get another list put together. Oh, so we do the research, but I tell people to start with five mm. and spend an entire month or more with those five people. Right. And yeah. there's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday mm -hmm. or through Friday one, and you take the weekends off. Right. Yeah. One of the things that I think is key, this one lady, um, she, sold a list of 2000 and you can have, you know, your postcards printed with your logo and, and it just, they get a generic, a, no signature, nothing. A right. generic postcard and, and, you know, I don't see any response would come from that. No, I don't either. Whereas there's a, well, you know, Deborah Dion of Dion audio. Yes. Mine. And she, ah. she's, she was telling me, <laughs> um, well, actually, uh, um, she hosts often in your area, as you know, the yes. Audio Publishers Association's Mixers. I yes. might have met you at one. Um, I've been out of California for five years now, but oh, okay. I to them. Got it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I in California to go down there. Anyway, um, she is a friend of mine and she uh, loves dogs. She also loves kayaking. I know these things because we both love dogs and we both love kayaking. <laughs> you walk up to her at an APA mixer, yep. if you start asking about her dog or showing her, I knew you would appreciate this um, more than anybody here. I just got a new pup puppy and I'm just, I'm so excited. I know we're here to talk <laughs> about books, but look at the, do you, what about that face? You know what I mean? Right. That's how you get to her heart. And that's how they, she assistants also, her assistants would like to be contacted every two months or so from the talents because they've got thousands on their list. Oh, they sure. Contacted, and you tell, you know, you keep them updated, but don't just keep them updated on the non-personal stuff. Let them get to know you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Pat Fraley, who is a uh, an animation actor and uh, incredible actor and um, and coach and he once told me this, think of those social mixers, all of those things where you get to meet people. Don't sell yourself. Think of those as the company picnic. 
<laughs> or you brought your kids right. along. I'm not saying bring your kids along, but don't just go, oh, hi. And these people expect it and they're tolerant with it in the audiobook industry more than in acting and voiceover. But, you know, don't just go and hand your demo out to everybody because yeah. the most business cards, they're going to end up in the trash. Totally. And if someone flew in for it, it's, they don't want to fly home with 100 USBs or or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do that unless they asked for it. But yeah. It's contacting them later. It's meeting. Yes, it's a follow up. Yes, meeting the person, and they happen to mean mention that they love uh, vacationing in Hawaii also. And then yes. you follow up and you say it was nice to meet you, or you follow up and say, you know, it was great to meet you at the such and such conference. I really loved what you said on the panel about this, that, and the other. Yes. Then you stand out, but you're not saying hire me, hire me. Exactly. We're so so on the same page with all of this. They know you want them to hire you. Of course, it's implied. (laughs) It's totally implied. It's why you're there. That's right. I mean, because they know, just like any networking group, everybody knows you're there to present your business. Yes, yes. But people want to work with people and people who are passionate, not just about their career, but just about life in general and different things. And that's that's the worst when you go to a networking event and then everyone just talks about what they're working on and what they did. And it's like, okay, but who are you? You know, Um, I have a a friend of mine who I haven't seen in a while and uh, we got on Zoom together. And he said, what are you most excited about right now? And I was like, what a beautiful question, you know, <laughs> like, like finding that, like, what's the icebreaker question that can just get people to go, oh, well, that's a different way to ask that as opposed to what do you do? What are you working on? You know, with that all networking technique is a whole other t- conversation we could have. Right. But it, it just comes back to in any correspondence, email, social media, in person. How can you just be a human being? Yeah. Is it going to grow from there? You've got, um, so let me go back to the uh, actor's, um, the, 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 the actor's office for just a second. So this is like a good place where I could go and research ahead of time and prepare for meeting these people that are going to show up at that mixer or people I know are presenting at Bio Atlanta or something like that to be prepared and research them and find an opening line that isn't being used for everybody that says totally. what's yeah. what are you most excited about right now or what's your latest project yeah. but it, it, it could say um oh if you're sleeping through the night yet you know what I mean because <laughs> anybody that's ever had a baby can relate to that one you know <laughs> sure sure, sure. So, uh, just to, to relate like that so that sounds good but you've got other freebies too you have an ebook could you tell us about your ebook Oh, sure. Yeah. My ebook, um, cause look, you know, when we set out to be, um, actors, voiceover artists, whatever, we don't go, Oh, cool. I get to be the CEO of my own business now. You know, like that's not why we start being creative. So we became creatives to be creative. That comes so, along with it. <laughs> right. It does. So that's what the ebook is. It's sort of my overview of my seven steps. It's really about seven steps to be a working actor. So if you're a voiceover artist and you're like, you know, I really want to get into acting too. I would really look at reading that book just to give you sort of an overview of what pieces do you need to have in place? And look, most of them are extremely applicable to the voiceover career as well, right? Because again, we're talking about mindset and finances and marketing, right? A lot of it is the same um, principles and fundamentals. Um, But that's really what that ebook does is and it's so you can just really learn more about how I work and how I think through that ebook. So a lot of people have pseudonyms. Um, when you're doing your voiceovers, your your audiobooks, yeah. uh, you use Judy Bent- uh, um, Judy, Jody Bentley, or uh, do you have a pseudonym for that? No, I use, I use my name. I do use my name. Um, though I've done some romance where I kind of wish I would have done a pseudonym for it now in retrospect, but that's all right. Uh, but no, I do. I just use my name for everything. Yeah. Okay. So we can look you up and hear you. Is there Correct. anything that you would like to share that I forgot to ask you about? Gosh, what a, what a lovely conversation we've had. No, I think if you are, um, if- yeah, I mean, if you are listening to this before March 20th, I really invite you to attend the challenge. I guarantee that you will learn something, that you will get something out of it. Um, one thing you will start to learn from me if you start to follow me and, and or you know take my mini course or whatever. Um, I'm all about content and value, so nothing I do is fluffy. <laughs> so just to know that. So if yeah, if you are um, yeah listening to this for the 20th, I do invite you to do that. But I just want to say, you know. I just want to acknowledge everyone here, Julie, all of your clients, all of your listeners, because to be an artist, it it takes courage. 
you know, it really does. <laughs> so I just want to acknowledge everyone listening um, to have the really the courage to pursue the dreams and the goals that you want, um, because not everyone has that. And yeah. the fact that you do is huge. And just, I think one of the biggest pieces of advice I give to a lot of my clients sometime, I'm like, just take a breath and just have compassion for yourself right now. <laughs> Cause we get, we're, some of us are our own worst critics, our own worst enemies. We never feel like we're doing enough. We never feel like we're enough. And I think sometimes we just got to take a breath and go, and I'm doing what I want to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be compassionate to myself. And everybody that. has, everybody has, um, imposter syndrome at one time or another. Everybody oh, has a day oh, when God. I say, oh my God, I suck. When I have those days and I do, then I tell myself, it's like, Julie, they've been hiring you for 45 years. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that attitude won't get you anywhere. So no. but one of the things that I think is very helpful and you and I both offer this is a community. Yes. Get involved with because then there's other people saying, no, you don't suck. Remember just last week you did that national blah, 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 blah. Yep. You're just feeling low today. And so your attitude about yourself is low or you just missed that audition. But that's not a reflection on you. That's right. what we have to remember. Yeah, so, totally. Um, thousand percent. So it, you, can, um, you can find out about Jody's um, uh, Jody's uh, community and also um, mine in the information below. Great. Great. So um, thank you so much. And one, anything more to add or or we covered it all? I think that's it. I think we did a good job. (laughs) Okay. Can people email you if they have any questions? Um, of course, you can email um, my, my uh, everything goes through my assistants. I do have, have a team now because it's been challenging to balance my coaching business with my acting career and audiobook career. But yes, support at jodybentleycareercoach.com. Email any questions that you have there. And obviously, my website is jodybentleycareercoach.com. You can go there and you find all my freebies there as well. So you can head on over there for any information too. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jody. We really appreciate everything you had to share. Thank and you. thank you for joining us too on the VoiceOver Insider Podcast.